After many years of promises, I finally figured out what the state of my collection is, and I'm going to do a state of the collection video. My collection is quite large. This, these boxes, these seven boxes, um, constitute my collection. Don't worry, they're not all full. Uh, I'm not going to try and rattle through 50-something watches in one go. I'm going to break it up into little bits and pieces, and I'm going to start with this first video, which are kind of the rules of my collecting game. That way I don't have to repeat it for each of the subsequent bits. Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville. And as I kind of implied, for me, watch collecting is a game. A game is any activity which on its own isn't that tricky, but is made more fun through the, the imposition of arbitrary rules. Think of it this way. Simply walking up and dropping balls into a little cup isn't much fun. But start imposing some rules, say that you've got to stand back from it, say you've got to hit it with a stick, say that the stick has to be a certain size, and suddenly you've got a game and it's enjoyable. Well, for me, watch collecting is kind of like that. You create some rules, rules that you enjoy, that kind of fit with you and your lifestyle, and then you collect within those rules, and that's the game. So what we're really talking about now, the rest of the state of the collection, is kind of like seeing the scoreboard. It's kind of like seeing what came out of my game. What I'm going to talk about today, this video, is the rules of the game. What am I trying to do when I collect? What are the constraints I impose on myself? Okay, so the first thing is, what am I trying to do when I collect? is the first thing is, I suppose, I'm trying to do a couple of things. I'm trying to make sure I have the right watch for the right time all the time. Um, so as a result, I don't search out versatile pieces. I don't search out pieces which can do multiple things. I'm looking for pieces which are perfect for the one thing that they do. The second thing is I'm, I like collecting. I like to see uh, watches and collections of whether it's cars, cameras, whatever. Um, I like collections to have a kind of theme. So I tend to draw out some themes and something that drags them all together. The next thing is I want, um, I tend to associate with brands. Um, it's just kind of who I am. Not in everything. With some topics I clothes, I don't give a rats about brands. But with watches, I do. So I've made some choices to limit myself to some particular brands. You'll see as we move forward, some of the key brands that you'll see will be, uh, as it turns out, Breitling, Alpina, Seiko, um, and I've, I've got a couple of Mueller pieces coming. Those last ones, I'm not sure if I'm necessarily attaching myself to Mueller Glossuta or more kind of German brands more generally. That's probably something we'll look back on in 2021 and see how that pans out. Um, so anyway, the or actually probably 2022, now that I think about it. So they're kind of the rules. They're kind of the the uh, the brands that I collect from. Okay, I also collect in certain categories. I tend to collect dive and tool kind of watches, mostly aviation sort of watches. I collect travel watches, so anything with a GMT or world timer function. Um, I collect vintage watches. Um, so uh, and really just in terms of vintage watches, cheaper, simpler vintage watches. I don't at this point have any interest in kind of vintage chronographs or anything complicated and difficult to manage moving forward. So if you take the brands I kind of collect on one side, the, the oh, and the other thing I should say is I've also got um, some other, I'll say extraneous watches I tend to collect, which are either just fun um, and sort of line up with some of those other things. So they're just fun vintage watches or whatever. Um, and I do have a very small number of watches that are purchased 
essentially for this channel or really just for the hobby where I just want to experiment with something like I want to experiment um, spoiler alert, I want to experiment with a bronze case and see what that's like I want to experiment with a with a, um, an all loom dial and see what that's like then I'll sometimes I've got a very small part of my collection which are just those experiments for the channel so when that's that's basically how I collect the rules of my game in terms of price range, I I kind of top out at five ish thousand US dollars. In fact, I don't I haven't even really gone past even come close to that just yet. But when I'm doing my searches and building what I want, that's kind of my upper limit. Um, not because I don't think that watches get better after that. Um, they certainly do. And there's a couple of watches I'd call my grail pieces that I'm aiming for one day that would stretch that line. But in general, I find, you know, we all have this kind of cost and quality curve. And for all of us, that curve bends at some point where we stop appreciating the extra quality that we're getting for the money we put into it. So I fully acknowledge that as you go beyond 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 US dollars, I completely appreciate that watches do continue to get better. They get a lot better. But for my personal kind of cost quality curve, that five, six thousand dollars that's kind of where the, the elbow is. That's where the, the law of diminishing returns for me, really kicks in. So that's kind of my rules. That's how I look at this. Now, really quickly, um, I'm going to do three videos after this, which look at specific aspects of my collection. The, the part one is going to be my vintage Alpina collection. Part two is going to be all my modern tool and um, travel watches. Part three is going to be everything else, all my fun stuff, travel stuff, special, special feelings type stuff. So um, strap yourselves in, get ready for the next video, and um, I'll see you later. Bye.